Hey friends, it's Tracy. I am back again with more Christmas in July crafts to share with you my flip-flop Santa, my cheesy Christmas lights, and my upbeat beach music is back again to share some of my Christmas crafts with you. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started and I will share what I have for you. What I started with is this red truck gift box from the Dollar Tree, as well as one of the signs uh, that I had left over from Halloween. And uh, that is what's going to be the uh, base of my, of my sign. And uh, so after I took off the hanger, um, I was going to use some plaster, which is more ivory paint, but I, I changed my mind and decided to use some white paint. And this is actually chalk paint. It's actually what I had on hand and grabbed that. I'm also going to be using some crackle medium. And so what I did is I gave it a base coat of the white paint. And then once that was dry, I gave this a thick coat of the crackle medium. Now right here I'm brushing it on, but uh, in a second I'm just going to pour it on because I, I had like a brain uh, lapse in thinking. I was like, girl, put it, just, just pour it on because I like thick uh, on there because I wanted to make uh, some crackles. And uh, I do have a separate video of how to crackle paint. I will link to that for those who are interested. I let my crackle paint completely dry and then I'm going to put on uh, another coat of white paint. Um, I know it kind of is not going to show up too good on camera, but it give, gave me the cracks that I wanted to make it look like the snow uh, for the back of my truck. And uh, so then once that, uh, then you, you can, the camera kind of picks it up a little bit, but um I don't know. I just really like this crack uh, look and it just really gives me what I'm looking for for my projects. Now for the top of uh, this, I'm using this color agave, which is a chalk paint as well. Um, it was the color that I just decided to use. Now I'll be honest with you, this was just a tad thick so I should have watered it down a bit since it is a water-based chalk paint and um, I could have got some better cracks but I just kind of went with it and so uh, it was I put it on really thick and so I didn't really mean to do that but I just kind of went with it and once it was all dry I and, and I had my other uh, embell you know my other painting on there it, it was really okay so then now I'm just taking a, a stencil brush and just kind of stippling on some paint where the agave and the white paint met. That kind of, you know, just gives me that snowy look. I'm also taking that uh, stencil brush and just pouncing on some different, uh, kind of looks like snowflakes or just, you know, some decoration for the background of my board. Uh, the next thing I think I do is I will take the end of that brush and just put some white dots. I'm kind of mimicking um, what the background of the box was and I'm uh, going to put some snowflakes on there just using my uh, number two liner brush and you know just going to make this really cute. <laughs> I use my number two liner brush just to make some snowflakes on the background. And then uh, once that is uh, dry, I'm going to take some stickles, which is like a glitter glue. It's uh, kind of used a lot in paper crafting and I have so much of this stuff that left that I'm just really trying to use up. You can find it in the uh, scrapbooking section of the craft store. Anyway. Um, I wanted to give it a bit of glitter, so I'm just putting some of this, um, I think it's called Stardust, is in, uh, so I'm just going over the snowflakes and putting in some, uh, you know, just some color into each of the, like, dots, just to give it some, uh, you know, iridescent color and just some glitter, glistening snow, that's what I'm kind of going for. 
the stickle takes a little bit to dry uh, so I put that to the side and then now I'm going to work on my gift box uh, just take off the uh, you know the edges of it uh, like you know for the gift box just cut those off so that I can uh, tear and work with it a bit better okay so um, first of all I want to tear I'm actually tearing toward my body and uh, I'm tearing off this part of uh, the section of the box that says Merry Christmas because I'm going to use that but I'm going to use it in a different fashion. So I'm carefully trying to tear it away so that it doesn't uh, tear into the portion that I want for the truck and then it doesn't tear any of my letters. Okay so I like the ragged uh, or torn edge uh, where it has a bit of the box showing. So I'm carefully trying to go around the letters as, as close as I can get and then just tear it around. I'm tearing the box or the portion of this section, you know, toward my body so that I get the ragged uh, torn edge that I like. just carefully tearing it around uh, the section of what I want to do uh, for the truck. Now, since I did my own background, I'm not going to, those trees are beautiful, but I wanted, uh, I had kind of a different vision in mind. So I'm just going around the truck and uh, just tearing it around and I don't want that bow. So um, I'm just kind of tearing, I know it's kind of sad but I just I didn't want that bow anyway so I'm just tearing around the uh, edge of the truck again tearing it toward my body so that it gives me the torn ragged edge that I like sometimes I, I'm right-handed so I tear with my right hand and my left hand I kind of help guide it uh, so that it kind of tears where I want it to and uh, just sharing that because I, when I did the snowman sign, I got a lot of questions uh, on how to tear the box. So I thought I would just mention that. All right, for the letters, I'm just using my liner brush just to give it some white paint highlight. I just use some acrylic paint for that. I also did like a, a snowflake in the uh, where the dot of the eye was, then went back and used my uh, stickles that Stardust stickles just to give it some more, um, you know, iridescent highlight. Okay, so then I'm like, oh, yes, I have to put some white doodles around. So I'm just using that same liner brush and just going around and uh, where I want, just giving some doodles around the edges. I like the border and I just really feel it's part of what makes me uh, what I like and kind of makes my projects pop. So uh, to add some dimension, I'm just using some jingle blocks or tumbling tower blocks that I get from the Dollar Tree and just adding it to the back of the truck just to, like I said, make some dimension. I'm just using some hot glue just to attach everything. And I wanted to put my truck on first before I put my Merry Christmas on because I wanted to make sure that I get the placement correct. And just doing the same thing uh, with the jingle blocks just putting a couple of those on the back of the uh, words so that I can put it on the Merry Christmas and then I'll glue all of that down. I should have done this before I put my truck uh, glued it all down, but I completely forgot. I'm just taking my fine Sharpie marker and just going around and uh, giving it a black outline. This is something I like to do for my projects. I think that it just really makes the project pop and just brings it to life. And uh, so like I said, I should have done this before I glued it down. It really was okay. It just was a little awkward for me for my hand because I couldn't, um, you know, 
like press down on it kind of thing. Anyway, but it all turned out great. And uh, just adding, you know, just some black Sharpie marker, it just makes the project pop and it just really brings it to life. Then I'll go back and add some white, just acrylic paint to the uh, tires, just to give them some treads and bring that part of the project to life as well. Then once that is uh, dry, then what I'll do is I'll go back with the stickles. And what I want to do is I want to bring out the uh, headlights. And also I want to, uh, you know, just randomly give some stickles, uh, which is that glitter glue, just to bring out just some, uh, iridescent or some sparkle to this whole Christmas uh, decor piece. I'll do the same thing with the letters. I just went around and just gave it just some stickles just to make them, um, you know, the letters pop. And so that when you kind of see the letters, they kind of glimmer just a bit. Now, um, for a hanger, what I decided to use is the sisal twine that I got from Hobby Lobby. And uh, what I did is um, I knotted it about three or four times, probably four, uh, just so because of this particular sign had those holes in it. And so I wanted a thicker knot so that it wouldn't, you know, pull through through that. And, uh, then once I get the twine on there, then what I did is I just took some, uh, homespun fabric. I had these strips, you know, already finished or already done. Uh, meaning I just, I like to rip my strips of fabric off of my homespun, uh, off of the bigger piece. And, uh, I like the jagged edge or the ripped edge. And so I just gave it a, just a small bow on each of the, um, you know, edges, it kind of masks the, like where the twine kind of goes through and it just gives a decorative touch. <laughs> Using some of these things from the Dollar Tree um, as well as some other places I will kind of let you know where all of the supplies came from as I get to it um, I'm gonna start with this little Christmas box now um, my son and my grandson had given me my gift in this box and I said oh that is the cutest little snowman and so instantly I said, you know, I could transform him. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, the base of what I am going to, uh, you know, adhere that to are these two signs uh, from Halloween from the Dollar Tree. I liked the edge of the of them. They kind of look jagged. And uh, I thought that that would look really cute with some snow, uh, faux snow on them for a wintry scene. Okay, the first thing I'm trying to do is get the staples out. They were pretty deep in there and I've used a couple of different tools, but what helped the best was this upholstery tool. Now a sweet viewer had shared this with me in a, a, a different video. Uh, it is linked in my Amazon shop if it's something that you're interested in checking out, but it helps get out those deep staples. I guess they use them in upholstery shops. Anyway, and so um, now what I'm doing, I'm just trying to figure out how I want my signs to butt up where they kind of, you know, lay nicely together. And uh, so then I have some paint sticks I just picked up at the uh, hardware store like Lowe's or yeah, it was probably Lowe's. And so then I'm just cutting off about an inch because they're a tad too long and uh, if I'm just making this for myself and so if I were to be giving this away or selling it I would definitely you know cover up this back but uh, it doesn't matter to me since I'm keeping it for myself anyway so I am just hot gluing um, 
this sticks to the back of the signs just for stability. Then to cover up like that seam where the signs are together, I just have some of this um, kind of like filler spackle from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going around and just putting it in between where that, uh, you know, where the signs meet and then also in the holes of the staple. And I should have wet my fingers already because once I took a baby wipe and tried Tried to clean up a little bit I discovered that it's it actually goes on a little more smoother so I didn't know like once I painted the crackle technique on it I didn't know if it would you know if uh, the spackle were to adhere to, you know, it and that kind of thing, it, it, which it did. It worked out just fine, uh, but I didn't know at the moment. Now I'm just using some buttermilk um, Americana paint. It's just acrylic paint. I want that to be the bottom layer because that is what's going to show through the cracks because my, um, I'm going to put my uh, this color, then a crackle medium layer, and then a navy blue on top. And so this this right here is what is going to show through the cracks. So I'm using some crackle medium and you can get this at the craft store or I do have it linked in my Amazon store. And so I like to crack, uh, use the crackle technique on a lot of my projects. And so I am just, you know, just giving some, putting some here on the board. And then I just take my brush and just go over it. And it's, you know, I kind of take my time with it. I make sure that all of the areas are covered. And one of the ways that I kind of can tell is if I kind of hold a sign up or whatever I'm doing, I kind of hold it up and you, I can kind of see if there's like a spot that I miss. Okay, while my crackle medium um, sign is drying, I completely let that dry completely. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm working on my snowman. And so I cut off like a bit of the excess of the box. And so then I'm going to start tearing it because, you know, you can see like in the picture, I am going to distress the edges and it kind of looks uh, to me like some wood. Uh, and so it all kind of ties the project together for me. So I'm just taking my time and I'm going around the edges of the, you know, snowman and my, like where my left hand is, where my finger is, I am just holding that I'm kind of positioning it there. And then I'm tearing along, um, where I want my tear to be because that is what helps me guide it, uh, you know, so that I don't tear too much into the actual snowman. And so I just go around and I just tear off as much of the, uh, you know, cardboard that I want. And uh, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to distress it with my favorite distress ink, which is a vintage photo uh, distress ink by Tim Holtz. using my Posca pen uh, the, in white, the PC3M, and I'm going to show you here, it uh, kind of, you know, just like a paint pen, it kind of came out a little uh, extra on, you know, on the hat, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. I'm just, you know, just going with it. And so I use my heat tool to kind of set that up. I'll go back over, uh, you know, and doodle up everything with my black Sharpie marker and uh, make everything really cute. I thought he had a really cute face already, so I didn't do anything extra to that. Um, but uh, yeah, just, you know, just adding a little bit more character. For the winter blessings little sign for my decor, I'm using the bottom of the box and I'm just cutting away some of the excess um, that I don't need and uh, to give myself, you know, some writing space. I'm using this Posca pen. It's a PC-5M. Um, which is one of my favorites uh, for little projects like this. And it's like a paint pen, so you have to shake it up and, you know, make sure that you have the ink to come down. And so I'm just hand lettering uh, Winter Blessings on it. And I'll do that by, you know, just uh, writing out 
the the words and then doing my little happy dots on each end of the letters it's just something that I like to do for myself and then for the dot of each eye I am going to do a snowflake I'll do the same thing with my sign. I will cut off uh, the excess of the box and then I'm going to tear around the edges to give it the uh, jagged or ragged edge or the ripped edge. Um, I want to, like I, I find like tearing it towards myself or towards my body, that is what gives it the look that I want. If I would tear it the other way, it would give it a, a whole different look. So just, you know, if you like this look, just, uh, you know, play around with it and see the different looks that you can get by, by tearing your paper different ways so that, you know, it gives you the look that you want. Just using that same ink in Vintage Photo, I'm just going around the sign with my finger dauber and just giving it some color. And then I'll uh, also do the same thing with a Q-tip. I'll just use that, you know, my ink and go around the letters just for extra depth and dimension. Then I'm going to use my Posca pen, the PC-3M, and just highlighting the dots of the uh, ends of the letters just for some highlight. Now that my crackle medium is all dry, it will be shiny, but there's no wetness to it. I'm using this blue paint. It is a Deep Midnight Blue by Americana. It's just an acrylic paint. And I work in sections because actually it starts to crack right before your eyes. And so um, I want to avoid taking my brush and going over it several times. So I try to get as much paint on my brush. I load my brush uh, as much as possible where I only have to do one downstroke um, so that I don't go over it uh, because I don't know it just kind of it just doesn't give a really pretty effect and once I show you how it all dries you'll kind of see what I'm talking about because if I go over it a little bit more it does tend to not crack as nicely so now my board is all dry and you can kind of see it gives it a really really nice crackle finish and so then now I'm just going to um, attach my sign and my snowman and I want him to be three-dimensional and so I achieve that just with some little wooden blocks from the Dollar Tree the Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks that you find in the uh, kids toy section and so I'm just hot gluing those to the back of my snowman then I'll uh, glue those to the sign uh, or to my back sign and then I'll also do the winter blessings as well and then um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to use the burlap snowflakes or the white snowflakes so I was just kind of you know back and forth a little bit trying to figure out which ones I wanted to use because I wanted to use both of them but since I did the distressing on the snowman and the sign I ended and this is rustic you know I ended up using the burlap snowflakes from Hobby Lobby. I'm using these wintry branches. I, now I picked these up at Walmart. Um, 
they were in the you know floral section and they look icy branches and so I'm just trying to figure out how do I want to put them so then I needed something to stick them into so I pulled out my trusty Excelsior uh, it gives uh, you know a barrier something for it to stick to and also adds a bit of whimsy which I do like and so I'm just hot gluing that to the bottom of the snowman and then I'll will attach the uh, you know the icy looking branches to the bottom of the snowman For his bow, I decided to make a bow for, um, like, to put where his scarf is. And so, kind of, to kind of camouflage the uh, redness of the scarf. So, I have this two and a half inch uh, ribbon from Hobby Lobby. It's just a polka dot ribbon. And I'm just making a two loop bow. And I use my little tiny attacher stapler to, uh, you know, hold it together in the middle. And at first I was going to use this one, um, this check one, but then I decided, no, I'm not going to use that. So I wrap that back up, put that to the side. I'm using some different trims. And so, uh, you know, if you've watched my videos for a while, when I make my little messy bows, junk bows, refab bows, whatever you want to call them, my little bows like this, I like to use a different kind of trims and ribbons because, you know, it just adds just some different texture to your bows and so I have this uh, you know trim these trims I get my trims at Hobby Lobby Walmart uh, anywhere like little trims like this are sold and so I'll just continue to make my bow I'm also using some muslin fabric um, I don't know if I said that already but I'm using some muslin fabric that I already had uh, ripped and uh, just cutting that off in strips I'll go back later and clean it up uh, once I get my bow done I'm just using a pipe cleaner to um, gather it all in the center and then I will use my needle nose pliers to help get it really, really tight because I want my bow to pop. And what I mean by that is like when I get it really, really tight, it kind of like shakes around and like perks up those ribbons uh, because that is the look that I'm going for. And by getting that pipe cleaner really, really tight, I can have that little pop of my bow. To attach my bow, I'm pulling out a bit more of the Excelsior and then I'll hot glue that to the scarf that's on the snowman. And so the object is I want to kind of take away or camouflage that redness of the scarf. And then I just use my scissors to trim up any of the ribbon tails that don't lay right. Anyway, so then now I am going to use some all purpose caulk from the Dollar Tree. And I am just, I want to uh, give my snowman some faux snow. And so I'm just using some caulk and a stick and I want to camouflage some of those bear or cover up some of those red berries that's on the snowman's hat from this particular snowman and so I'm just taking some of those frosted branches and more of the caulk and just kind of you know putting some of that in there so that it kind of covers up those red berries and stuff and so then I'll just go around and I'll just add some more caulking um, just by just giving it you know just some faux snow just hitting the high areas I kind of just play with it until I like the look of it and just continue to add some faux snow to my sign then to give it extra glisten I add some Martha Stewart's fine glitter and so if I know if you don't like glitter then don't do this part but I like to use this fine glitter and then I go over my caulking just to give it a little of snow glistening. 
I do the same thing at the top. Um, that's why I liked these signs from the Dollar Tree. They were Halloween signs and I just liked the jagged edge. Uh, it kind of reminded me of, you know, something that you would see like an old picket fence. And uh, so I just take my caulking and just go around the top of the uh, of my sign and just around the top of the you know winter blessings also I am sprinkling on some glitter I know the the camera and the video does not pick up the glistening of the sign but I love the way that this turned out I decided just to have it set um, against you know like my little setup here I'm not going to put a hanger on it my first intention was going I was going to put a hanger on it but I just like it without a hanger just in my little winter decor setup that I have here. Okay, guys, here are more videos for you to watch in this Christmas in July series, as well as other uh, videos that I have on my channel. If you click on my little picture, that will allow you to subscribe to my channel and we can become great friends. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.